Hi everybody, this is Anne. I love using styrofoam shapes that you find in the floral department as molds for my hand-built pottery projects. I've used most of them in other videos, but I had this awkwardly tall cone shape sitting on my shelf just waiting for the right project to come along. Finally, I figured out a really unique way to use it, to create a double-decker bird feeder. Now I'll provide templates for you in the description section, but to make your own template, you can just wrap the clay around the cone, cut it, flatten it out, and trace it. Here's the cone I used. It already has plastic around it, which I can use as a barrier for the clay. So I simply cut away the bottom portion of the wrapping and kept the rest intact. Next, I need to roll out a fairly large quarter inch slab for the template to fit on. My regular rolling pins were not wide enough, so I used the wooden chair leg that I got at the hardware store. I cut out the largest pattern first. I also cut out a half circle shape. With the remaining slab, I need enough clay to create two floor sections. Those are big enough. To prepare the larger slab, I took a bevel cutter and beveled one of the long edges. I flipped the slab over and beveled the other side. I then scored both edges. Before putting the slab around the cone, remember to leave the plastic wrapping on it without the bottom section. That's important. Now I gently picked up the slab and wrapped it around the cone, trying not to stretch it as I do it. Now I simply just needed to work the two seams together with my fingers. I used my red rubber rib to smooth out the seam and clean up any other areas of the slab. Now I can remove the cone. Now I'm turning it on its side so you can see for the video, but it's best to pick it straight upwards and pull the cone downward to keep the clay from distorting. I poked my needle in the foam and simply pulled it out. Then I can peel the plastic away from the sides. For the rest of the project, I found the wheel to be the best way to keep everything nice and straight. I put one of the remaining slabs on the center of a bat. I placed the cone as close to the center as I could and used my fingers to trace around the shape and reposition it as needed. You can see that the top of the cone has shifted off center. I can now reposition it to the center. That's better. I removed the excess clay from the bottom floor. I used my fingers to work the floor and the cone together and create a nice seam. It's best to let the piece dry to leather hard before doing the cuts to the body, but due to time constraints, I'm gonna work with what I have. I steadied my needle tool against a brush and cut out the top section of the cone. I'm just setting that aside for now. With my fingers, I just worked the top of that flat. I scored the flat section, then placed that second floor slab over the top. When I pick it up, I can see where it touched and I can score that area and slip it. Now I can place it back over and press it down over the top to firmly connect the two pieces. Working underneath, I cut away the excess clay. Then I worked the seams together. I traced a circle around the center of the floor and poked four drainage holes around it so water doesn't get trapped in where the food is. Now I can score the edge of the main cone and the edge of the top portion and reconnect that to the cone.
are really work that seem together along the body. To fill that top section with feed, I wanted to create a funnel shape to pour the food into. Using the half circle, I beveled the edges like before. I scored them and connected them to form a small cone shape. I scored the bottom of the funnel along with the top of the cone. I slipped one edge and connected the two together. For fun, I'm going to ruffle the edge of the funnel not only because it'll resemble a flower shape, but also I think the seam might warp anyway in the fire, so I don't have to worry about that. Ideally, I do my cutting on leather hard clay, but for demonstration purposes, I'll be cutting the remaining holes on this wet clay. I marked for the two bigger holes on either side of the cone under the funnel. Using my big hole cutter, I cut out the holes on either side. Under those holes, but above the top floor, I marked for two more holes with a Gatorade cap for the birds to access the feed. With a paintbrush, I can now get the inner seams and seal and smooth them. Under the door holes, I cut smaller holes for a dowel rod to be inserted for a perch. Along the bottom section, I marked a line for the bottom door hole. I created this template for that. I placed my doors opposite of the top holes, but you can design it any way you want. Using my fingers, I make nice smooth openings for the birds. Again, I cut holes under the doors for a dowel perch to be inserted. I worked the inner seam along the floor and along the bottom of the second floor with a paintbrush. My clay is so wet that I don't need a coil, but at leather hard, using the clay coil in the seams will give you a better connection. Here's one I made earlier. You can see I poked holes in the bottom floor for water drainage. I decorated it by carving birds and flowers into the sides. I'll bisque fire this and then glaze it and fire it to cone 5 with a 4 minute hold. Here it is, all glazed and fired. I cut the dowels to the desired length and painted them to protect them from the weather. I inserted the smaller dowels into the holes. Now you can glue, seal, or use grommets or even just rubber bands to create a tight fit so they won't slide out. I filled the feeder on both floors with food filling the top through the funnel. I threw a rope over the top of a high branch and tied a loop. To hang the feeder, insert the loop through the top hole. Insert the big dowel through the loop and into the other side of the feeder. Birds started showing up as soon as I hung it. Our first visitor was a tufted titmouse. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.